could be starting this video with another postage rant because I ordered a radiator for the Evo, which finally came today after two, two months. End of November I ordered this and it just came today. But I'm a little bit scared because, as you can see, the box is very creased. There's a nice dip in the box here and also another nice one here. Now I haven't opened this yet, so we're about to find out. Will it be damaged? I hope not because these are really well packaged actually. And nothing there. Alright, thank God for that. Now the reason I'm doing a radiator in this car is because one problem that I see a lot with especially Evo 5s and 6s is it blowing the tanks on the radiators. Now, as you can see here, the plastic starts to go white, and then after that, the plastic goes really soft, and you can actually scrape plastic off with your nail that it gets that soft, and then they split. And I don't really want to be out thrashing somewhere and get stuck with a smash radiator. So I thought, I'll, while it's still going, I'll put another radiator in it and you get a cooling mod out of it as well. And this looks like absolute shit. And to pull that out, you got to dump the coolant anyway. So if I'm dumping the coolant, I may as well do a radiator, do all this stuff at once. So the car's getting a bit of cooling mods on this video. And also, two of my three orders have arrived from Amiyama. So as I mentioned in that last Evo video, Amiyama is a site that you can cut out the dealer. You order straight from, for example, Mitsubishi Japan, and they ship straight to you, and it's cheaper than going through the dealer. Last order, I got all these, all four, brand new. And this time, I got, as you can see, genuine Mitsubishi with the stickers, part numbers, etc. I got both front, inner, door trim molds, or whatever you want to call them. So they are, these ones here. Of course the door's locked. So they are these molds here. Now, the reason I'm replacing these is because you push these back down and every couple of minutes this will pop back up. So it's not flat anymore from the heat. It's got like a concave to it. So I bought both side inners of those. Hoping it fixes the problem. It's not the door trim itself that's pushing it up. And I also got this. I'm sure you're thinking, why the hell did you just buy a straight piece of metal? Well, it's actually the bracket that sits behind the grill here, the mesh, and that's what the Mitsubishi badge bolts up to. Now the reason I got this is, one, it's missing completely, and this badge is just glued straight to the mesh, which I really don't like. So I'm gonna do it properly. Now my next order that I'm still waiting on has a new badge, as this one for some reason has a goddamn hole drilled right through the center of it. I have no idea why, but I'm replacing it. So it'll get the bracket and mounted properly, and I'll stop looking at it every single time I walk past this car. I don't know what to do first. Might do the interior stuff first. And if you're hanging in suspense to know what happened with the VN diff from last video, well, unfortunately, I haven't got it back yet and I will reveal all most likely in next week's video. So the van's still sitting here with no rear end in it, which is a shame because I really, really want to drive this car. Anyway, that'll be next week back to the van. But for now, onto the Evo. So I decided to actually come hang out with mates at my mate's panel shop here, Mini's Paint and Panels. Now this is a place that painted my Sephiro. So, you know, it's always better hang out with mates all doing car shit, so I decided to come do this stuff here. So I'm gonna do these uh, door trim things first. As I was saying, you can see they don't sit properly, and this one actually pops out and like sits like that all the time when you're driving, you clip it back down, pops back up. So I'll show you when it's off, how it's not flat anymore from the heat. Be easy to go off, get off, it's like three screws, and then just 
just unclip it. One, two, and three. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Four. As you can see, there you go, this is actually a really good comparison, new against old. Look how warped this one is by the gap here in the middle when you sit them flat against each other. So hopefully these new ones sit properly. I've said it before and I'll say it again, there is nothing better, nothing more satisfying than clipping on brand new genuine parts. things is getting this to sit back under the trim when you put the door trim on and I managed to find this most amazing little tool in Anthony's toolbox that you can just run along here as you push the door trim in and it all clips back under and there you go whoop de doo something I'm sure a lot of people will say what the heck did you bother replacing that shit for well Every time I was getting in the car, I was looking at that. It was very, very annoying. Super happy with that, and definitely need to buy one of these tools. Can't see. And, uh... Okay. Look at all the new GoPro. I can't believe you're reusing oil. Look at all the new GoPro. No, it's a 7. Hey, can I have a look at all the metal that comes out of it? Uh... Now, don't film that. Don't film a video. This is a brand new box. Dude. This is a brand new it's box. Driven to look at the metal on the bottom of it. Wouldn't that it looks be, like it's on a bearing. Wouldn't that be from like assembly? Yeah, it's all wearing in. And I told, yeah, I can tell my. Ooh. We just swapped it over. Now, this car, if any of the VN guys are watching, I'm sure they will ask what goes with this car. The genuine 5 litre X Cop car, uh, full respray, and LS Turbo with 9 inch. Going to be a very cool car. Perfect plates for it as well. <laughs> you're right, you're up. Brand new gearbox test number one. So Gerald just had a box built for this car. Is this the clutch you just pulled out of it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Dropping Gerald's car back. Fuck, this thing is so loud. Stupid clamps should be shot.
now you can see a lot better what I mean about why I want to change this radiator. See the plastic's gone all white and it's really soft. Like it's, you can pick at it with your nails and chunks come out. So that is exactly why I'm changing this radiator. And I finally get to paint this while it's out. So I was going to paint this up really nice because as you can see the top is all rusty but upon pulling it off you'll see these blades are also pretty stuffed. They pretty much turn to powder when you chip it in with your nail. So I think when one of these pops up uh, on Facebook I'll grab one of these and chuck it in. So for now I'll just quickly haze some black over the top and put it back in. So while I'm waiting for my half ass paint job to dry on the fan I thought I'll show you the difference in size between these radiators. So the standard core is 35 mil, or an inch and a half for you Americans, and the new one is 50 mil or two inches. And obviously the tanks are bigger as well, so. Hopefully it doesn't make, things are really tight in the front of Evo, so hopefully it doesn't fit, doesn't hit anything and fits perfect. We will see. Now two problems, one, this bracket just touches the turbo actuator, so what I was going to do is just grind the edge of this off, of course I loaned my grinder out so someone else has it, so I'm going to have to use a file, and two, I think I'm going to have to put the radiator in first and then slot the fan in over the top, I think that's going to be the best way to do it. All right, it is finally in. Very tight fit, and what I had to end up doing was put the radiator in first without the fan on it uh, to get that tab. You sort of slide it down and then across behind the actuator and then slot the fan in, but I had to smash the bottom in with a hammer. A bit of hackery, but it's what you gotta do to fit aftermarket shit. This is why I keep preaching about fitting genuine parts all the time, how easy it is, because you know they fit. When you're fitting aftermarket stuff, Nothing ever fits, ever. And I had to take the intake pipe off to get the fan past it. So I'll put all that back on, bleed it up, and we'll take it for a drive. Always use demineralized water. Done. This junk can go in here and go straight in the bin. Now if you have a keen eye, you will have noticed I have the van diff back as well. So the saga with that will continue in next week's video. But for now, let's go take the Evo for a drive and make sure it doesn't explode or shoot off into the moon.
video when we return to the Diff Saga and uh, what the conclusion of what they have done to my Diff is. So stay tuned for next week when we go back to the VN.